Hello everybody, my name is Anna Rita Tramfici and I want to welcome you to Inefficient UX Patterns, Avoid Doing UX Wrong. This screencast will look at some ineffective UX patterns that you should avoid when building websites. Many of them are still used on the web, but their usage should be seized because they seem to not suit users or business well. In this screencast, we will cover these three patterns Hamburger icon, Carousels, Infinite Scroll. In addition, I'll propose some alternatives in order to help you seizing with their use and study better and new practices. Said that, let's start! In the past few years, the three bar icon, sometimes referred as the hamburger icon, has been widely adopted in many apps and websites. Although indicated as a convention, the hamburger icon does not work in every case. It's not always true that what becomes a trend is well and good for users. Just because everyone is implementing a particular icon, navigation menu or pattern, it doesn't mean that people will get it and that it will be a good solution for their personal project. Often, the wide adoption of a given convention is driven by a chain of copy and paste and not by a well-pondered reason. The hamburger icon pattern has become a cross-platform convention representing a menu and, in some cases, a list, and it has been employed by companies such as Disney, Starbucks, Facebook and Google in the mobile versions of their websites and mobile applications. But a question that has become increasingly frequent is do users really understand what it means? This icon seems to be understood by regular users, but no one can tell if it is understood by everyone. Results seem to be influenced by demographic values, and a greater effectiveness is gained adding the word menu to the icon. Issue number two. The hamburger icon is not very intuitive. People who develop mobile apps know from experience that the hamburger icon indicates a menu, so they wrongly assume it's intuitive. The dictionary defines a convention as a way in which something is usually done, especially within a particular area or activity. Therefore, we can say that the hamburger icon is a convention, but this does not mean it works in every case. Recently, it has become a staple of no UI design and its effectiveness is higher if used as a list icon rather than as an indicator of a menu. Actually, the hamburger icon does not look like a menu icon unless users already know that it's supposed to show the items of a menu. The key point is that it would all depend on the user base and how exposed they are for its use as a menu button. So, positioning, experience and widespread use can give users insight, but they do not ensure is engagement and satisfaction. The takeaway lesson here is that a solution is never valid for all project or for every situation. In this specific case, the hamburger menu ended up not being the best answer for a mobile navigation menu. As possible solutions, you can Try using the word menu instead. Consider using a down arrow or another active icon. Reconsider the menu position and function. Use an off-canvas menu and use a tab with an arrow to indicate active interaction. Why shouldn't I use a carousel? For this question, there are at least three good replies. Carousels are tricky. On the surface, they seem like a good idea, since they hold a lot of content in not a lot of space. But they've got their downsides too, and there are several reasons why you should avoid to use a carousel in your website. Issue number one. Carousel's click-through rates are terrible for every slide except the first one. 
reports suggest that of the very few people who click on a carousel, upwards of 80% of clicks are on the first slide, with lower than 5% on subsequent slides. Carousels that just have forward or back navigation don't give the user any incentive to click through. Users visit websites to read the content they are interested in and they should be guided to the content they desire. Carousels undermine this goal. Issue number two. Carousels that auto-rotate are rarely set at an appropriate speed. People read at a different pace and this is the reason why it's impossible to tune the carousel to the correct speed. Whether it be too slow or too fast, it annoys. Carousels compromise information retention. Studies suggest that the motion of an auto-revolving carousel often makes carousel look like banner ads. So, users often gloss right over it and retain very little of it. Say that, what should I use instead of a carousel? The best solution remains the classic approach. Prioritize content and feature one item at a time in each space. Rather than four or five content pieces that get buried in the same region, choose the most important message and display that, changing your featured items often. In this context, there is a case that is worth a mention, and that is the GitHub homepage. Endless scrolling emerged from social sites like Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn in order to skip the need to click when moving between pages. This is a technique to make the browser auto-load new content when the user reaches the bottom of the page, so that it is not necessary to look for pagination buttons to go to a next part. The whole thing will appear just by rolling the mouse wheel. Etsy spent months developing and testing infinite scroll to their search listings only to find that it had a negative impact on engagement. Finally, it was removed from the site after the number of clicks on favorites decreased and the search function was not used anymore. Dan McKinley noticed how infinite scroll failed in every major way. Seeing more items faster is presumed to be a better experience, but the A-B tests showed various negative effects of the feature, including fewer clicks on the results and fewer items favored from the infinite results page. Curiously, while users did not buy fewer items overall, they just stopped using search to find these items, he said. Studying in depth the Etsy case is outside the scope of this screencast, but if you want to know more, you'll find a list of useful links at the end of this video. Here is a short list of 10 reasons why pagination should be avoided. Number 1. Users will lose the page length orientation and the browser scroll bar will become useless. Number 2. There is no ability to jump to the end of the list. Number 3. Your users will not be able to get back to the same in-page position in one click. Number 4. There is no visible footer until your users come to the end of the list or content. Number 5. Slow experience and a lot of browser memory as the page scrolls down. Number 6. If you switch away from the page by following a link, there is no way of getting back to where you left off. Number 7. Lack of sense of completion, with no closure for users. Number 8. There's no SEO opportunities for content located below the first scroll. Number 9. You lose the ability to bookmark a dedicated point of interest. Number 10. The fear of missing out data or other options will distract your users from completing an action. 
Using or not an endless scroll depends on how users will be interacting with your website. However, there are two alternatives that you should consider. The first one is the standard pagination with the option of setting page size. The second one is the automatic loading of some content rather than a non-stop barrage of content. To sum up, three tips to take with you. Try to avoid the use of the hamburger icon. Avoid the use of a carousel to display your images. Think about the use of the infinite scroll in your website and reconsider the use of alternatives that better fit your needs. In this screencast you have discovered some examples of potentially ineffective UX patterns and explored some interesting alternatives. In conclusion we can say that testing is the key, since user testing and A-B or multivariate testing can really tell you whether your design is working or not for your specific case. The best advice I can give you is to look at your user's needs and avoid to imitate others blindly. If you want to discuss about UX patterns or anything else, get in touch with me using my email address or on Twitter. Bye bye!